afternoon. My name is Aurélie Soulier. First, a uh, little warning in front of an audience and then to switch to French. So <laughs> apologies. If you want to talk to me about the English version later, just come and see me. Um, I'm a learning technologist for Cranfield University. I've prepared this presentation with Fran Harrison, our e-learning uh, project manager. Uh, but I'm presenting about something we've done as a team, uh, which is basically a um, uh, program that we've designed, developed, and successfully implemented, a 10-week program using Moodle entirely. And this, passage, this package is called Getting Published in 10 Easy Steps and was um, different from our standard Moodle courses. It's the first time we did something different, not just using our collapse topics and the standard uh, Moodle page, uh, but we also, it was different in the sense that we used the whole of our team and colleagues to put that together. So I just wanted to share our experience. <laughs> um, so, um, as well as covering the origin of the design of the program and its implementation, I will also explore um, different ways we've put the program together and how we integrated things like videos from our streaming media server and things from uh, a blog that we've written in Mahara. Uh, so how we've overcome um, different um, challenges. Um, and finally, I'll expose some feedback uh, of the program and further steps for our development. Okay. Um, the Get, Get Published program was initially implemented at uh, CDS, the Cranfield um, Defense and Security School, which is one of the four schools of Cranfield University. Uh, we're based um, at Shrivenham, uh, the Defense Academy. There might be people here from either Defense Academy or military background here at the back on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, <laughs> and a colleague uh, from another part of, of the MOD is here as well. Um, we've got different VLEs, uh, but we all use Moodle, uh, so we share things together as well, and we learn from each other, and that's one of the good things we've, we've learned from other people here. Um, not all students uh, come from a military background, so we've got students from um, 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 straight from universities and first degrees, but we are a postgraduate only uh, university, so we, we teach at um, postgraduate level, and we have a key activity is research. Uh, so we have a lot of researchers, and um, we uh, one of our targets, like many universities, to increase the publication and the quality of publication uh, for things like REF. So um, about um, 18 months ago, uh, we had a meeting with um, uh, one lecturer, Tracy Temple, and um, um, Dr. Richard Twyman, an expert in preparation, editing, and revision of scientific manuscript, who has a golden eye for publication. Um, our director of research, Prof. Richardson, uh, supported and sponsored the project as well. Uh, so we met, and they wanted something like a webinar series, but they didn't know what a webinar was. <laughs> so we uh, talked to them about what we could do with Moodle. And uh, we come, come up with this Get Published in 10 Easy Steps package and designed it as a, um, as, as a team um, um, and recorded, um, piloted um, what happened with that. So the aim was to reach our research staff and research students who couldn't attend uh, Richard's face-to-face -face workshops for full days um, and guide them through each step of, of the writing process of papers. <coughs> So now, for your eyes only, uh, to assist researchers, um, we had this 10-week program. So what we have, obviously, we've got an introduction, summary, and survey at, at, at the back, but it's 10 steps consistently designed um, in a grid format. Um, it's the first time we were really using grid formats uh, for anything else than testing. Um, and what we've done is we've tried to pull it all together with a very consistent format, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, Okay. The um, development of the program was overseen by our project manager, Fran, who wrote this presentation with me. And for the first time, as I said earlier, all the parts of our team pulled together to actually create this higher level of um, standard interaction, just to, as uh, Louis said earlier, for us the interaction was, was a great thing to build a community of researchers as well as delivering that program. Um, um, so there was a mid-development focus group as well that we held with some MSc students um, uh, from the course that Tracy uh, was teaching, and it quickly became evident that the taught student, taught course students, had very different expectations from our program. So literally, we were at that stage trying to do 
you know, pull square pegs into round holes because they, they have very different expectations. But throughout the programs, this difference carried on as well. Uh, so this highlighted for us the importance of this defining your course audience very well and that will, will actually change that for future implementations as well. Um, but the big take out for us was how we could actually efficiently develop that social learning community development to actually pull together through the program and keep them motivated in learning. Um, so uh, one of the um, requirements that we had um, was to control the access. So we were asked for something like a MOOC, but not a MOOC. <laughs> typical. <laughs> so they didn't really want everybody to get into, uh, into it. They just wanted the researchers, but they wanted it for the researchers to be easy to access. So what we did in the end is we just controlled the access with an, an enrollment key uh, that they were given on an invite. So all the researchers were sent an invite, paper invite, and they were able to uh, join with that key. In the end, we had 134 staff and research students self-enrolled on the course. And it doesn't sound much for most people, but we only have 220 academics in our institution. So it's, it's quite, uh, it was quite a success for us. And um, we added something that we call a privilege access, which is basically an element that after a cutoff point, which was halfway through the course, uh, we stopped the enrollment key. So just to keep that sense of community, we stopped people joining after a while so that they could go through and learn. So this is why it's not quite open. Um, so um, what we've used, as I said earlier, is a grid format. Uh, it was initially designed on a clean theme for Moodle 2.9. Uh, but the transition to 3.1 was actually quite seamless. So we're quite happy with that because we moved to an essential theme. Um, the grid format for us uh, Im improved the visual impact of the course. We used our graphic designer uh, team. Uh, and again, when I say team, I'm almost talking about one and two people. We are about 12 of us in the, in the different teams who pulled together to create this. Uh, with two learning uh, technologies, two graphic designers, two programmers, um, and some people doing multiple roles as well. Um, so, but the graphic designers ensure the consistency, the thumbnail styles, which work well for mobile as well. Um, and each step, each step had a date release system as well. So we use the restrict access function um, in Moodle to, uh, to, to, uh, to move forward. Um, so each of the steps were created on the template. So they all work exactly the same. So students have got clear expectations of what to find in every step. Um, first of all, we had a video that was filmed and published in-house with our graphic team, uh, led by Claire, our graphic uh, art director. The, written, uh, the music was written in-house by our multimedia programmer who happens to be an experienced uh, electronic music composer. So we just pulled on everything we could get. Um, the audio files were accessible um, here to, for, for different learning preferences as well and accessibility. The transcripts were there as well every time. Uh, and some staff actually commented um, on, uh, on feedback that they used the audio transcript and the, um, the audio file and the transcript together so they could annotate as they were listening. They preferred that to the videos. So it depended on, on who was accessing. And there was a summary as well. So these were not the transcript of the key points of takeaways of what they could get from that, which were matched with the summary in the video. The forum was more moderated by the subject matter experts, so Tracy Temple and uh, Dr. Richard Twyman. And um, also we had a persona, um, called Get Published, would keep reminding people to take part. Um, um, uh, just when a new section, a new um, step was open, they would actually post something, etc. So it's that keep, keep going from the course that wasn't a, per, a real person, but just kept people uh, on task. And there was a, a learning journal uh, that people could use to actually reflect, um, and a blog. Uh, the blog is not a real blog because we don't have a blog system at Crown University, so we used Mahara, and we had a pre-worked example that was published every week and released every week. Um, and that's the uh, integration. So that's the Mahara pre-worked example that we've got on the side. Um, and uh, as I said, every week there's a new um, example, so it's text that um, somebody might have written and what they changed, reflecting on what they've learned in that video uh, for that week. 
Um, also, we don't have a content management system. Um, and so, because we had quite a number of videos, what we used uh, is a streaming server. Um, I don't know if anybody uses Ensemble, but it's not really good. <laughs> uh, we didn't really enjoy using it, but we just had to, because that's the system we had, and we had some uh, difficulties with it, but in the end, we all overcame it. So what we did, I think it's later on my presentation, but I, um, I can say now, is um, what happened with the Ensemble, we can't choose your frame when you, when you display it in a label in Moodle. Uh, so what we did instead of doing that, we use a picture of the, the, the front, the, let's say the title, and we just put an icon of the play button on it so it looks like people are going to play it like in YouTube. And then that clicks to a URL that opens Ensemble, basically. So just workarounds that we had to go through. Um, so what we had as well, participants were awarded a badge on completion of the exit questionnaire. So we, had, we wanted to get feedback on this, obviously, because it was a pilot. Uh, so we had a number of questions, and if they answered the questionnaire, they would get a badge. And that badge was their invite for the 11th step promotion party, uh, where we would get more feedback, basically. So they were invited to have cakes and coffee in the library uh, after they completed this just as an incentive uh, to completing. Um, um, and that worked quite well. Um, and we had more feedback at the 11 step celebration as well, uh, gathered by the project manager and the learning services team. So that was very useful. <coughs> so um, how, um, Okay, how we got about it is uh, sort of the successful feature what worked was that uh, we met, the Get Published team met regularly um, as a team with the subject matter experts. So that goes back to involving the teachers, the, the content and the instructors are the key point here. They are, they are the people doing the, the content. We are just enabling them to do that with the technology. So we had meetings, uh, we used that Get Published persona that was really successful and the community development was almost, um, we, Basically, we tried. It was almost a surprise that it worked for us, and it was really good to see people in forums, experienced researchers, talking to less experienced people and giving advice and sharing good practice, um, and just linking up as well. Um, the badges were a success as well. We, uh, the enrollment uh, system worked well, and the grid actually was very suited to this program. Um, the difficulties, um, it's, um, as I said earlier, trying to um, manage expectations of, of the academics in that case, of trying to manage content, but we got over the enrollment issues with just having a key for enrollments. Um, the um, development and community building questions, uh, so we involved stakeholders, uh, we were reviewing progress, and we developed it in an agile way as well. So we did the first few weeks in advance, but then we actually redesigned the videos of the week five, six, seven, as the first few weeks were running. So we were quite agile in the development of, of the, the program. So we were ready at any time to put in like little chats and things like that, which we didn't need because things were done on the forum, but we were ready to actually do interventions if needed uh, by uh, Richard Troyman. Um, the uh, videos, as I mentioned, didn't play well, so we um, used like a picture with um, um, a play button on it. And the other thing is the Moodle uh, URLs went friendly. So we had, I think Jason's in the room somewhere, uh, uh, making us a custom URL for quick access. So that could go on the invites, etc. cetera. Um, the feedback. So um, on the um, 11 weeks feedback, we had 100% of the people who answered uh, said they, they uh, would revisit the program when writing their next papers. So that's something, obviously, that's um, exactly what we expect them to do. So that's good. And that's the thing. It's, it's now staying a um, almost static resources that people can tap onto if they were part of that program. Uh, the exit questionnaire uh, gave us in-depth feedback that I've mentioned just now as well. And, um, the, um, and we gathered more feedback. One of the key things we've asked, we have been asked for is uh, at a social science thread, which was in incorporated in the second version. So that's one of our uh, researchers' view. Basically, very positive um, feedback about the... Um, um, the discussion forums um, and also the design um, and uh, the fact that even though there wasn't any social science, uh, they could actually apply things to their papers. 
Future steps, uh, so briefly mentioned, there are, there are, there's a version two, so never say never again. We update, we, uh, the uptake from the university-wide staff in the second run package was um, uh, about as high, if not higher, about 200 people. So we've now moved to, instead of just our school, the whole university running this package. Um, there's an impact, it's just still running, it started in December 16, so it's not running, but it's just finished. And the impact study on both current cohorts is currently done. Um, and Professor Mark Richardson, the director of research, our sponsor, who's pretty much the man with the golden gun, wants us to meet to discuss the next steps with the package. So we're looking forward to actually uh, develop this and, and update video and content. Um, so just any further information, uh, contact us. Uh, I've got um, um, a Twitter account as well. Uh, if you want to talk to me, come and talk to me at lunch uh, or dinner. And this is us, that's our Twitter accounts. And any questions? Thank you very much for an excellent presentation. I just want to say, I think it's a bit cruel. We have a talk about good practice for course design, then you have to stand up and talk about how you built your course. But actually, I think you passed the test because I think you did most of the things that Lewis said you should be doing, like high production values and 